In this video, we are going to be covering a full breakdown of Keepa and how to make more informed purchasing decisions. Let's jump right into it. What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new, my name is Brad Sherman. I have been selling on Amazon for about four years now, seven figure seller. And on this channel, we explore tips, strategies, and experiences that I have had that will help you start and build up your Amazon FBA wholesale business. In this video, we are going to be diving into a screen share and I'm going to walk you guys through how to fully analyze Keepa. And the focal point of this video is going to be how to analyze variation listings and determine if the buy box is rotating amongst the existing sellers. This video is going to equip you with the knowledge to make more informed purchasing decisions for your business so that you can sell through your inventory faster and not get stuck with inventory due to poor buying decisions. Before we jump into it, if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to smash that like button, hit that subscribe button and notification bell as well if you do want to stay up to date on all future content that I put out. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. What is going on YouTube? We are here on the inside of this recording. As you guys saw from the video introduction, we are going to be covering how to analyze variation listings on the Keepa chart. So we're going to dive into a screen share here. And I have a couple product listings up on Amazon. We're going to go through two different product listings. And I chose a couple listings that have several variations on them. So you can see here on this item, there are four different color variations. And then on this item, there are a bunch of color variations and size variations as well. So variation listings are very difficult to determine which variation is selling best because the Keepa chart takes into account the sales of all of those variations. So this happened right around in about May of 2020 when Keepa made a change and began combining the product, um, the product variations onto one Keepa chart as opposed to displaying different Keepa graphs for each product variation. This came during the time of the pandemic when there was a bunch of changes going on in Amazon's algorithm. So Keepa made a transition into focusing on the variations that um, or focusing on combining the variations into one chart. So what we're seeing here is a representation of the sales of all of these variations, colors, and sizes into this chart. So you might be saying to yourself, how the hell can I even start to determine what is selling when there's so many variations? So you have to be very careful when making investments, especially if there's this many variations. Now, what we can see from this is that not all of these shirts are going to sell equally. Some will sell better than others, but there's actually a really easy determinant that I use that is pretty much the start of my research on any variation listing. So let's just start with this listing and then we'll jump over to this one. But um, with something with all of these variations, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to come down to my Keepa chart plug in here. I'm going to click on variations. And then I'm going to look here over toward the rating column because ratings is going to give me a rough idea of what the sales traffic is on the product listing. And with this, I will be able to sort my ratings from highest to lowest. So you'll see that once I sort my ratings from highest to lowest, I can now see much clearer on which variations get the most ratings and reviews. 
This translates to sales because reviews are a percentage of the total sales volume on a product listing. So for instance, they even show us a chart here. This shirt, the um, floral, uh, it looks like a darkish blue shirt or blue indigo palm trees, extra large, is the best selling variation on this listing because it has the most ratings. On the chart, we can see that um, you know there's an, a gradual increase in the number of ratings over time, and that's what we're looking for. I'm looking at this over the past three months, but I can look at this over the past 30 days if I wanted to, 180 days, 365 days. So if I wanted to take a look at it over the past 30 to get a rough idea of what it has recently been doing, um, I can toggle to the 30 day viewpoint and then look and see that the first couple variations sell very close because we have 220 ratings on the first one and then we have 218 ratings on the second one, both of which get 7%. So when you toggle between these different views, you're going to roughly see the same sort of thing on each listing, um, meaning that the variations tend to stay the way they are over time. Now, if you were concerned with, okay, well, maybe the blue indigo palm trees Hawaiian shirt in extra large is the best seller or gets the most ratings now, but what did it do 365 days ago? That's what this is because we can see the graph in terms of that range. So, um, you know, you might want to look at it last summer. What was it doing last summer? Because that's when this product is going to sell better is during the summertime. So right out off the bat, you know, I can rule out all of these bottom uh, variation listings. So if I'm looking at a price list and I don't know where to start on all of these variation listings, for me, I'm going to rule out anything that's getting this low of traction at you know eight ratings, less than 1% of the total ratings on the listing. I'm not going to look at anything until we're really up and above out of the water here. We're still at 1%, you know, so I'm not interested in any of that. Rather, if we keep scrolling up to the top, I'm just going to pull the top three product listings here. So if I'm interested in purchasing the top three product listings, um, this gives me a better idea of what the best sellers are for this particular listing. Um, you know, so what I would do here is I can do, just put ASIN. Um, I'm going to put the product name And just so we have a record here. So our first ASIN is this item and it's the blue indigo palm trees. Extra large. Our next best seller, so to speak, or the, the variation that gets the most ratings is the um, is the large white with palm trees. That's in the large. And then we have the next one down, which is roughly similar to uh, the, the fourth one down. So I would probably include both of these because the third and the fourth are roughly the same. Um, and what we're going to do here is just continue, you know, to write down um, which product listings. So white with palm trees, extra large. And then this is the same as the one prior, blue indigo palm trees, large. Um, so again, I would go over here, grab the ASIN. Put the product description in, blue indigo, palm trees, large. 
which doesn't surprise me that when we're looking at men's Hawaiian shirts, likely the best selling sizes are going to be extra large and large. Um, and these blue and white are fairly common, um, common colors that people are going to be purchasing. So now if we wanna take it a step further, and really get an idea of which product listings are selling out of this list that we already narrowed down, what I might do is I might track the inventory of the sellers that are selling these particular items. You know, so let's look at the first ASIN. This ace in here is um, the blue indigo extra large. So I'm going to go to that one and I'm going to do a count stock, which if you guys don't have the free software count stock, that's something that you might want to download because um, you can track the um, stock and inventory levels that different sellers have. So I'll go here and I'll put, you know, today's date and I will put the, just a copy and paste of that count stock on here. So that will tell me that on today, March 14th of 2022, this seller has 185. And then, you know, I might go back in a day or two and check how much have they decreased. You know, maybe tomorrow they have 180. So they sold five overnight. Right. So this is a good way to just get a rough idea of what the kind of volume these sellers are moving. So obviously on this product listing, there's only one seller. So we're not really tracking um, who's getting the buy box because one seller is really only getting the buy box. But um, as we can see, you know, we are able to get a rough idea of what they're selling. You might see from day to day, um, as you track this, the seller increases stock. And that just means you know their inventory became available, whether it was in fulfillment transfer, it now became available and um, they are you know, adding inventory, which tells us that they're also selling inventory potentially because they wouldn't re be replenishing the inventory if they weren't selling the product. So, for this particular product listing, there's only one seller on it, but that is how I would narrow down the variation process. I would take the top two, three, four sellers, depending on how many variations there are on something like this. I'm not really going to look at anything more than four variations. From there, I would break up each ASIN into a new tab, and I would then track the inventory of each of the sellers so that I can get a more concrete definitive idea of what kind of inventory they're selling. Um, so let's look at this other product listing here with four different variations on it. And what we can see is just from a quick glance at the Keepa chart that Amazon was selling the product um, for quite some time, but they recently ran out and that is probably due to supply issues. So if this was a company that say you were trying to get a wholesale account with and, and you were going to purchase from them, I would determine from them, are they continuing to sell to Amazon? Because as we know, we don't wanna compete with Amazon directly if Keepa is showing that they are not sharing the buy box, which that is the case on this listing. Um, so again, I'm going to my variations and I'm sorting it by the best sellers. And it looks like the um, excuse me, I'm sorting it by the ratings, which is a percentage of the best sellers. Now, the first product that I'm looking at is the red variation. And it looks like that one sells the best. And then we have the gray, and then we have the aqua. And then there's a pretty good size drop off between the aqua and the white. So I would do the same exact thing here for variations. I would, um, you know, create our sheet and I would put our ASIN here 
and I would put our variation. This is the red. Again, I know what the product is, so I'm not going to put the full description. Um, and then we have gray, which is selling the second best. Um, aqua and then white which sells the least but still probably gets some sales um, so it's worth noting and then again same process i would take a look at um the um stock the count stock uh, so let's look at the red variation um, and I would go to count stock and I would see, okay, it looks like one seller has only two items. This is probably an arbitrage seller that is, um, you know, getting this product at a discount from a store and then um, selling it on Amazon. So that is really the variation process and how I will rule out product listings that have multiple different variations. Again, we, if we're dealing with something like this with tons of color variations and size variations, style variations, I would focus on you know the top three or four. And same thing here, we're dealing with less variations but it's still important to get an idea of which of these products get the most traction so that you're able to make an, a more informed purchasing decision. I can't tell you how many times I see people, you know, buying an item that is priced exorbitantly high than the other variations on the listing. And they think they're going to make a great margin, but in reality, that product does not sell and it's the lower priced items that are actually selling a lot better than that, that one pr high priced item that looks like you can make a lot of money on it, but in turn is actually not a good seller at all. So that is the bulk of this variation tutorial. Um, again, we've covered this in other videos, Keepa's buy box statistics. I'm going to leave two links above. Um, we have a, a video that I put out, um, which was covering the buy box statistics on Amazon and how to determine better if the buy box is rotating. As we know, we can go to the data tab, click buy box statistics and hover over different day views to determine who is getting the most percentage of the buy box um, and when they last won it. So that video up above will go into depth on the buy box statistics. I'm also leaving another link for my full Keepa tutorial breakdown. So if this graph that you see right here is foreign to you, you are going to want to check out that video as well. Um, that'll be it for this screen share. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you have any questions, drop a comment down below. And as always, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you want to stay up to date on all future content that I put out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you next time.